Hello and welcome to Newsfeed on Trust TV. I am Doc as Yakubuzala, bringing you trending stories that people are talking about and sharing around the globe today. Nigeria, first country to roll out new meningitis vaccine, says WHO. Reports arbitrary price increases, FCCPC tells Nigerians. Widow arrested for producing and selling lethal psychoactive substance in Calabar. Israel says it shot down 300 Iranian drones and missiles with U.S. help. Now, top on what's trending, the National Identity Management Commission, NIMC, says the planned national ID card will be issued to applicants by their banks. NIMC said it is working with the Nigerian Interbank Settlement System, NIBSS, to deliver the cards to applicants. The card will be issued through the applicants' respective banks in line with existing protocols with the issuance of the debit credit cards, the agency said in its Friday update on its official X handle. Now someone said, what about those that don't have bank accounts? Why is it that in Nigeria there are unnecessary protocols? I get it that it's all about security, but can't NIMSI establish itself? Why can't they maintain their database by themselves? Another person said, bravo, that way the national ID card is linked to your bank account and traceable if you commit a crime. A netizen wrote, we are getting there small, small. Next election, I am voting for Tinubu if all these good works continues. Now, the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission has stated that it will not hesitate to take action against businesses engaging in price fixing. The SCCPC disclosed this in a statement posted on its official X handle on Sunday, April 14th. The agency urged Nigerians to stay vigilant and report any unfair trade practices they encounter. Now someone said, thank God they are finally addressing this, because why is dollar rate dropping and the price of food is still rising? Another said, where's your office address please, I'd gladly be your whistleblower. Another person opined, why do we need to report? You people know the road to the market, right? As if there's one working helpline in Nigeria. Nigeria has become the first country in the world to roll out a new meningitis vaccine recommended by the World Health Organization, WHO, in a historic move. According to WHO, this is especially important for countries like Nigeria, where multiple serogroups are prevalent. The new vaccine uses the same technology as the meningitis A conjugate vaccine, which wiped out meningococcal A epidemics in Nigeria. The vaccine and emergency vaccination activities are funded by Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, which funds the global meningitis vaccine stockpile and supports lower income countries with routine vaccination against meningitis. WHO stated that the revolutionary new vaccine offers a powerful shield against the five major strains of the meningococcal bacterial A, C, W, Y, and X in a single shot. Now someone said, Africa is turning to a testing ground. Yesterday, it was Zimbabwe with HIV vaccine. Today, Nigeria with meningitis vaccine. Another said, Nigeria has the most case of this disease. It is only right for us to do this. People against this should ask themselves, if these people did not give us vaccine for polio, tetanus, and other deadly diseases, where will we be? Another wrote, there's a vaccine for typhoid and malaria in the United States. Why not bring it to Nigeria? Now, a 40-year-old widow and mother of two, Theodora Ita, was on Monday, 8 April, arrested at Basi Edom, Calabar, by NDLE operatives for producing and selling a lethal new psychoactive substance, locally called Combine, which is a mixture of different strains of cannabis and opioids soaked in raw gene. As at the time of her arrest, 18 liters of the dangerous substance in used paint drums were recovered from her. In her statement, she claimed she started the illicit drug production and distribution in October 2023. The spokesperson of the agency, Femi Baba Femi, in a post shared on his ex handle, cautioned the public about the severe health hazards associated with consuming the combined mixture. Take a look. Now, a netizen said, this looks like poison. Why would anyone want to take this? Another said, 
and we wonder why there are different kinds of illness in this generation. Another person wrote, where did she learn that from? She could have been channeling all that energy on what ethics do best, which is cooking or housekeeping, amongst other good things I can recall. Very appealing. Now, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Taurid Lagbaja, has ordered a probe into the death of a hotel manager in Abia Estate, Achimugu James Etubi. Some personnel of the Nigerian Army were said to have brutally tortured Etubi, which resulted in his death. This was after a Nigerian Air Force cadet, Emmanuel Ohe Mereche, reportedly drowned in the hotel's swimming pool. Now, someone said, this is unacceptable. All those responsible must be apprehended and held accountable. Nigeria is not an animal farm. Another said, since 1960, politicians and their workers have been organizing committees and probing everything without good results and changes. Another person said, Nigeria Army is meant to protect citizens' lives, not kill. Now let's take a short break and when we come back, you get to know what a top official of the Nigerian Correctional Service said about Bob Risky's gender. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It's Newsfeed. Now, the Anambra State Police Command has announced that operators of the boat in which the late actor Junior Pope was traveling in before he and others met their untimely deaths have been arrested. The state police spokesperson, SP Tochuku Ikenga, disclosed this to newsmen on Saturday, adding that the boat operators were in police custody in connection with the unfortunate incident. Ikenga also disclosed that the producer of the movie, Adam Maluk, had voluntarily turned herself into the police. He added that other members of the cast and crew of the movie would be invited for questioning. Now, someone said, leave the boat operators and arrest government officials who refuse to develop our transportation system. Another said, I was thinking that by now a sitting governor of the state where this event took place should have visited the scene and seen what he can come up with so to prevent future occurrence. But no, a quiet bomb state governor had to intervene for the young lady involved. What are the rest of the governors doing? Another person wrote, I hope this is not a prank and they will do the needful. Now, a top official of the Nigerian Correctional Service has given an update on how cross-dresser Bob Risky is being treated in prison. Recall that Bob Risky was handed a six-month prison sentence over Nera abuse. While sentencing him, Justice Abimbola, a woke borough of the Federal High Court in Lagos, said the judgment would be a deterrent to others who are found abusing and mutilating the Nera. An official of the prison who spoke to newsmen said the cross-dresser was taken to prison after the judgment and he was examined at the point of admission. It was also stated that no realignment of gender or genital organ was discovered as his male biological features were the same. The source said Bob Risky made a public declaration that he was a male and court proceedings are public records. Now someone said, I pity the ladies that believe that he has changed his genitals to female. This man was deceiving many girls on this internet. Another said, I said it. Bob Risky is just a fake walking filter. He uses you people to sell markets. He's neither transgender nor gay. Same goes for that Afrikaal princess, or is it prince? They just run their hustle on the internet. Even his staff call him sir. Another wrote, so all the surgery and transgender talk was just calm? And now on the foreign scene, Israel has said it and its allies have intercepted the vast majority of more than 300 drones and missiles launched by Iran. It said there were a small number of hits on its territory, including at an IDF base in southern Israel, which one child has been injured. Iran's unprecedented retaliatory attack marks the first time it has targeted Israel directly from its own soil. Iran's attack is a retaliation from an Israeli strike that killed an Iranian military commander in Damascus, Syria, earlier this month. Now someone said, remember, Iran has every right to defend itself. Another person said, I mean, that's what you get for attacking an embassy, the right to act back. Another person wrote, Israel has every right to defend itself and respond back. Israel successfully managed to bring down 99% of the missiles that were launched towards it. And now in sports, the Nigerian Football Federation, NFF, has appointed Manu Gerba as the head coach of the under-17 male team, the Golden Eaglets, 11 years after he guided them to the World Cup. 
He was in the same position when he led the team to victory at the FIFA Under-17 World Cup for Nigeria in the United Arab Emirates in 2013, Nigeria's fourth triumph at that stage. The squad, which finished as runners-up at the African Under-17 Championship in Morocco after a penalty shootout defeat by Cote d'Ivoire, defeated Mexico 6-1. In their opening game, drew 3-3 three three with Sweden and hammered Iraq 5-0. Now, an netizen said, congratulations and good luck to you, legend. Another said, they searched and couldn't find anyone else for the job. Another person wrote, we need to move forward. NFF, please stop recycling. Now, onto a funny video of an impatient little girl. Take a look. Well, we all know it's frustrating sometimes, but a little patience can make a difference. And that's it. You're up to date with the trends across the globe. Follow us and subscribe to all our social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X. Until next time, goodbye.